Hi everybody, Dr. Friedman. Welcome to week seven, how rules help tell stories. Uh, this is the first of the student request weeks that we'll have here in uh, this part of the semester, which will go through uh, to week 12. Uh, students submitted uh, stars and wishes for the different kinds of aspects that they wanted to go into further depth on. Things that we've touched on and talked about, but they'd like, like to talk about more. Um, lots of interest in playing more together, which we'll be doing next week, as well as thinking more precisely about mechanics. And wow, is it a good time to be thinking about that? Um, because in very recent YouTube memory, as of the time of this recording, um, Z Bashu uh, recorded an animated spellbook episode about um, his experience of thinking about uh, playing Blades in the Dark and kind of pros and cons, um, which in turn was inspired by Matt Coville. And then Matt Coville recorded his own video called Talking About RPGs, Mechanics versus Setting, and Styles of Play. And together, you get in less than half an hour this really smart conversation and really entertaining conversation, or so my students say, um, about um, why you might pick a particular system, um, why people hack D and D, and kind of why people might stay in that space, but also why it's good to experiment with other rule systems and kind of some of the advantages and critiques of Blades in the Dark. That was the kind of preliminary to listening to um, a episode of One Shot Podcast, uh, which was the setup episode for Blades in the Dark. Um, so it was just character and crew formation, none of the actual play of the game. Um, if students want to pursue that further, they of course can listen on and God bless. I also gave them the Quick Start Blades in the Dark player rule set, um, which is a couple of dozen pages, most of which are the player role and different crew option sheets, as well as um, quick start recaps of the rules as one pagers, one for the GM, one for the player, um, to uh, think about uh, when you play. So it's not the full rule book, but it's a really good place to start to talk about document design. Some of our students are document design students in the room. So it's useful to think about what draws your eye on a character sheet. Um, what's the kind of language being used? Um, what, and then what, how does this tie into mechanics and the expectations for play? And of course, what we noted in our close reading of uh, Blades in the Dark materials for today is, of course, as befits a game that is largely about um, doing crimes and, you know, heist mechanics, a lot of the actions of the individual player are either morally gray or potentially, as one student said, negative, um, you know, kind of violent or do we want to say antisocial? Um, whereas the actions that you take for the benefit of the crew are in kind of very positive kinds of language um, in terms of creating allyship and supporting and assisting. And all of this comes together on the GM page, which is where we kind of found ourselves at the end of class taking a close look. Because one of the things that students reacted to, especially students who have either run very few games or have never run a game, is how on earth will you start running a game when there's so much world building material? And so we started to take a look at the kind of first principles that are, that are on the uh, kind of quick start GM uh, reference page, which are very, very positive in their kind of ethos around, you know, what the GM principles are. So the GM goals, the first thing you see on the top left corner, play to find out what happens, bring Dusk Ball to life, and convey the world honestly. And then the principles are be a fan of the NPCs, 
let everything flow from the fiction, hold on lightly, address the players, address the characters, paint the world with a haunted brush, surround them with industrial sprawl, and consider the risk. And then from there, the rest of the page looks very intimidating, right? A whole set of possible names and family names and aliases, words for how different characters might look, descriptions of the city, um, shortcuts to notable people of Duskfall, um, the districts arranged from richest to poorest, different locations you can draw from, and then at the bottom, some quick uh, references to how consequences happen, complications, engagements, how stress works, those sorts of things, the practical nuts and bolts stuff. And as I and my Council of Sages, our experienced DMs noted, you need very little of this to really get started. Once you've done the session zero, which they've followed um, in terms of creating these characters and creating a crew that works together and has particular kinds of skills, then it's about creating the plot hook, right? The one thing, the thing that must be accomplished, right? And so we took a look at the smuggler crew, uh, specifically the fact that the smuggler crew um, has a couple of different options. So Blades in the Dark um, has these set roles for characters um, where, you know, you can be, um, you know, kind of more of a fighter kind of build, or we might say that in another system, um, you know, a more social kind of uh, build. You might be literally a ghost in a machine. Um, at the same time, and so you have a character sheet for yourself, but you also have a character sheet for your crew, which is gaining in reputation and turf, um, hopefully not catching too much heat um, while they do it, and who are and which is leveling up as well. So we looked at the smugglers, and one of the special abilities that a smuggling crew can start with is leverage, that the crew supplies contraband for other factions. And so that's a great place to start with a plot hook. And as I said, okay, so let's imagine a kind of contraband that needs to move through the city um, that the crew needs to facilitate. And of course, someone said ghost drugs. And then someone was like, well, what does that mean? Um, is it drugs made out of ghosts or is it drugs for ghosts? And in Blades in the Dark, it could be either one. And I said, well, as a DM, you have a couple of choices. One is you can make a contact who says, all right, the ghost drugs are at this dock, at this place, and you consult the map and you just pick a place um, uh, that seems likely uh, and you say, and go. And maybe the contact doesn't say what ghost drugs are. So then the players have to decide what ghost drugs are um, and throw it back in their, you know, in their face, make them, make them decide whether the ghost drugs or drugs made out of ghosts or drugs for ghosts, because that leads to some interesting possibilities, right? The crew could decide that they want a bigger cut of, uh, of the pie than what their contact is going to give them. So maybe if they believe that ghost drugs are drugs for ghosts, that they will go find a group of ghosts. And then you have to figure out like the group of ghosts, but like that's, that's a later step. And so one of the things that we talked a lot about uh, is you start with a minimal amount of a hook and let the players extrapolate from there. And then at a certain point, either they execute because you're asking them, what's the plan? What are you going to do? And your job is just to adjudicate like the roles, right? Um, and if you get in over your head and there's something that you need to look up in order for the experience to be um, enriched and meaningful, end the session do a little research, come back the next week or two weeks from now, um, armed with what you need. And so what today really was about was not about being master of mechanics, but figuring out how to understand what the action words of a particular rule set are um, and looking at the mechanics um, and using those kinds of things that we now have at our fingertips, actual plays as reference, um, other people writing and thinking about these these things in addition to our ability to kind of 
take a look at a rule set. And for different ones of us who have different ways of processing information, um, you know, all of those are part of our toolkit as modern game runners. I'm really excited to report that uh, student groups are doing this even as we speak. Um, one group is uh, working on Jason Cordova's Brindlewood Bay. Another group is working on um, Good Society. And that's what they're doing, right? Like I have not taught them either of these systems. Instead, they are learning by doing. Um, for those of you who are interested in pedagogically, um, this is going to count for multiple tasks. For students who have no background in gaming, if they are playing a new game system, then they can get credit for multiple tasks of the eight they need to do across the semester if they want to get an A. Um, so it's been really rewarding to see not only how my students have reacted to this, but they've infected their friends, which is super amazing. That was what we did for the second half of class, more or less. The first half of class was decompressing from the most amazing week that I have had in quite some time. Uh, we talked a little bit about um, the semester to come uh, in terms of students need to check in with me one-on-one, um, -on -one, either on Zoom or in person. Um, by October 15th so that we can do some mid-semester checking in on how people are feeling about their contracts, whether we need to make any adjustments, um, whether I see any big gaps that they need to address, um, and any support I can give for final projects. The last three weeks of class will be devoted to those final un-essays. Two weeks of, you know, basically supervised work time and then a final week of sharing. Um, so that could end up being play testing, it could be peer review, it could be just structured making. Um, we're gonna find out. Um, we also, of course, talked about how it was how it felt to be part of the two Zoom meetings we had last week with B. Dave Walters and Abria Iyengar. Um, I will be uploading a version of B. Dave's visit um, once we are able to redact all identifying student information. Um, the tricky part about releasing that video is B. Dave was very kind to offer to have it released, um, which I did not expect. And in fact, um, as I'll, I'll talk about in another video, um, I was very explicit about saying we were recording but not going to share the video outside of class precisely to give a certain level of comfort to our visitors. Um, and so that will continue to be the case unless um, folks would like for their, um, you know, comments and thoughts to be shared. But B. Dave would like them to be shared and we're more than happy to do so. It was a great conversation, um, but we did it inside the space of the classroom, which means that every time I talk, it cuts to the entire classroom. So we are going to be figuring out a way to deal with that uh, so that we can respect student privacy. So stay tuned. Um, that will be available in the fullness of time because it's mid-semester and things are a little wild around here. So yeah, so that was uh, the first day of week seven. Uh, on Thursday, we have yet another visitor. Um, we're gonna be going back to talk about um, Thousand Year Old Vampire again with Tim Hutchings and uh, taking a look again at um, Luther Room's uh, review essay as well as Shut Up and Sit Down's review essay, review video of um, a memory of, of Thousand Year Old Vampire as a great game for lockdown. Um, I really like that we've got Tim coming in part because this is a reciprocal relationship where I have also offered to visit Tim's classes and also because Tim brings an artist sensibility to game design and students have lots of questions about how games are designed and hopefully we'll be able to answer some of them. Um, as with all of these class visits, they end up being kind of Q&A conversations um, where students ask questions anonymously. Um, and one of the things I'll talk about in a video that I'm going to dedicate just to talking about um, class visits and how they work is in the era of Zoom, it's much harder to have um, a polyphonic 
sort of conversational experience. So students reported that it would have been much different had we all been in person. And maybe someday we will be, but that's not where we are right now. So at any rate, we're going to be talking about uh, game design, mechanics, and meaning again on Thursday um, before we play The Quiet Year next Tuesday before our fall break. Um, and just in case you're the kind of person who is uh, subscribed to this channel and watching this video all the way to the end because you like to hear me nerd out, um, next week on uh, Thursday during our class, normal class time, which is to say um, about 11 o'clock in the morning central time, um, I will be on um, uh, a Twitch uh, stream from... Uh, Carnegie Mellon's um, Game Lab to with my collaborator, Emily Kugler, um, to talk about our work with gaming. Um, so it's the OH exclamation lab and friends. I'll put the link down in the notes. Uh, so it'd be lovely to have you as part of our conversation on Twitch live for once. Um, I'm looking forward to what will be, I think, a really cool um, conversation about our work in the pandemic, um, thinking about games, uh, what our different teaching experiences have been like this semester, and much, much more. Uh, so see you on Thursday.